Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I hope that you are very, very well. And I've got a big stack of books here to talk about, but first of all, I want to apologise if you can hear my neighbour's music, which is playing very loudly through the wall. Um, but to be fair, I don't have a leg to stand on because I've just been teaching singing from inside this room. So, you know what? All's fair in the game of noise pollution. Um, but yeah, if you can hear music, that's what that is. Uh, but today I thought I would talk to you about some of the non-fiction books I would like to read this year. I've got some that are very sort of, I have a day I know I want to read them. I know I want to read them this month or whenever it is. Some that I'm like, I would like to get to this this year. So yeah, I just thought I would chat you through some of the books on my non-fiction TBR. Now I do an annual challenge every year where I try to read at least one non-fiction book every single month and I have yet to fail at this challenge since I st started it. Um, often I read more than one non-fiction book in a month but it's quite nice to kind of have that like set aside time to get your teeth stuck into something non-fiction. I've got a big range of stuff here. I don't think any of it will surprise anyone though. Um, so the first one on the pile, this was a Christmas present, uh, is Women Who Won by Ros Ball. So my mum got me this and she actually um, got this for me years ago <laughs> because it's published by Unbound who are a crowdsourcing, crowdfunding publishing house. So you, it's kind of like Kickstarter in how it works. So they put up the books that they want to publish and people can contribute to the publishing of that book and then your name is put in the back of the book and my mum did that for both herself and for me so my name is at the back of this one um to recognize my contribution uh, on which my mum did on my behalf and it's about women who reshaped politics that's its tagline 70 extraordinary women who reshaped politics um obviously there's a few recognizable faces on the front and on the back, including one of my favourite ever quotes from Shirley Chisholm, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. It's one of those where like, there's a pic illustration and kind of a little biography of each one. Um, so just about lots of different, different people. Let's find another one. Uh, the pages stuck together. Here we go. Oh, I found Shirley Chisholm. Um, so yeah, I'm, I think this would be a nice one to kind of dip in and out of. Um, over the next few months. Another one I got over Christmas. Now this one I bought myself in the Waterstone sale and that is Otherlands, A World in the Making by Thomas Halliday. Um, I have, I'm fascinated by uh, natural history and I think that is what this book is about. It's about the history of life on earth. There we go, the history of life on earth. <laughs> um, and I think that's fascinating. I love David Attenborough documentaries. Um, I was a science nerd in school, let's be honest, I'm still a science nerd. Um, and I mean, it's a beautiful cover, isn't it? And it's like just beautifully bound. I love these Penguin editions. Um, so yeah, I think this is gonna be a sort of overview of life, life on earth, of natural history. And I think it's gonna be a really interesting one. I have left the sticker on which bugs me, but I'm doing a thing this year where I keep track of how much I spend on the books as well as <laughs> as how many I read. So I've kept the sticker on for that, but I might peel it off and make a note somewhere. I don't know. And then another Kickstarter one uh, is All the Violet Tiaras by Jean Meansies. And I am so, I mean, of course I'm going to love this because it's about queering the Greek myths. I discovered I can't say that when I was discussing this the other day with um I said it's about queer Greeks <laughs> uh queer Greek myths or queering the Greek myths it's an inkling I love the inklings they're so tiny uh and on such a niche topic and a niche topic that I love um so yes I'm very excited for this one as well this arrived in the post a couple of weeks ago so I'm gonna I'm gonna get stuck in I'm gonna get stuck in the next two are two that I've been sent for review and I have my reviews coming up over the next couple of months. Um, so, shameless plug, make sure you follow me on Instagram and on my blog, links in the description, to read my reviews of these books and all the books that I have here. Um, but the first one, again, with queer mythology, queer, myth, queer villains of myth and legend by Dan Jones. Um, so I feel like this has, I think it's got the same format 
as women who run so it's or one rather women who won so yeah it's like individual chapters on is this one about doctor who it is about doctor who it's about the master oh i love that anyway um yeah so i just opened it to dorian gray there we go there's like a little chapter on lots and lots of different things um a chapter on dracula there's illustrations as well so yeah i think this is going to be fascinating and really fun chat from medusa there we go so yeah i'm really looking forward to this and one of the things that i have found in a lot of queer books about mythology and fairy tales is they are very focused on mm relationships rather than ff relationships um partly because of the relationships that were given priority in historical record but i think this book does some to balance that so i'm looking forward to that and the other one is a bookshop of one's own by jane cholmley um, and this is about a bookshop called silver moon which i think is a memoir but yeah silver moon bookshop um which i had never heard of before i came across this book which i feel like i should have heard of it before now that i know a bit about it um and it was founded in thatcher's britain um and is about a group of feminist uh lesbian women who set up this feminist queer bookshop in london in thatcher's britain oh, that sounds fascinating um so yeah it's one of those i've never heard of silver moon and i've been seeing this book everywhere so then i got and i got the chance to review it and i was like yes 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 so i will be reading this i'll be devouring this and letting you know what i think so the next few are ones that have been on my shelf for a little bit longer. Um, and the first one is Bad Feminist by Roxanne Gay. I can't believe I haven't read this yet. <laughs> I really want to. And so I'm determined. This is the year. I'm saying this to you now. You can hold me to this. That this is the year that I will read Bad Feminist. I've read some of Roxanne Gay's fiction before, but I've never read any of her nonfiction, um, which feels like a crime. I really, I need to, I need to. So yeah, that's, I mean, obviously this is a very famous work um, and a very influential one and I just need to read it. I just need to read it because I know I'll love it. A history one now, um, and there's actually quite a few of these on my shelf. I just picked one out to show you, but maybe I'll get to some more um, this year. And so this one is The Lost Tudor Princess by Alison Weir. Now we all know I love the Tudors. And I love Tudor history and I love Alison Weir books. Um, so yeah, I've got a few Alison Weir books and a few other books about the Tudors, some non-fiction books about the Tudors on my TBR, but I just thought I'd mention one of them. Um, and the reason I'm particularly interested in this one is it's about one of Henry VIII's sisters, I believe. No, niece. It's niece. Um, so people who are related to the kind of main characters, the main players, of the Tudor period who are often looked over um, but are equally important and I believe yeah she had a very like dramatic and political life just from the blurb which makes sense given her relatives and their family um, so yeah <laughs> I'm looking forward to reading this one and reading about a figure I don't know much at all about from the Tudor period um, most Tudor non-fiction books I read are about people I already know about so I'm really looking forward to reading about someone I don't know about. Another one about the natural world is Move Like Water by Hannah Stowe. So this is a memoir meets science book about marine biology and marine ecosystems and kind of her life, but also looking at the oceans and linking them together, I think. Um, I'm going to be honest, this was a bit of a cover buy because it's beautiful. Look at how stunning that is and it's signed and it's got sprayed edges there we go it's got sprayed edges and it's signed what was a girl to do um but it does look really interesting i did check i did read the blurb before i bought it and thought that looks really interesting it looks like something i haven't read before but something i would really enjoy um and also so the reason it's on specifically this year's tbr is because one of the buzzword prompts this year is like move like water but yes a story of the sea and its creatures so i think she is a marine biologist um and has like studied the oceans so that's how they kind of link together 
and I bought this from St David's, which is the smallest city in the UK, which is near where she grew up, which is why it's a signed edition. Um, so yeah, I think this is going to be a really interesting one and unlike anything I've ever read before. And the last book on this list is another history one. Um, I think I mentioned it in a video last year at some point, I can't remember. But it's The Princess in the Tower by Philippa Langley. This one came out towards the end of last year and I saw so much hype on Twitter. Um, I think my, my Twitter circles is like a mixture of book Twitter and history Twitter. Obviously there is a big overlap between them. Um, but yeah, I was seeing a lot about this book and I thought, you know what, I've got to, I've got to read it. So The Princess in the Tower, if you are unfamiliar, um, were two princes, obviously, uh, who were in the Tower of London, obviously, uh, and they were kept there for their own safety by their uncle who was watching the throne for them um, because they were too young to inherit the throne. Um, and then they mysteriously disappeared. And hundreds of years later, we don't know what happened to them. So there's a historical mystery aspect to it. Like we don't, we genuinely don't know. Um, and I think, I think in this book, from what I've heard, the author comes to some conclusions. Um, the general consensus from what I've seen on Twitter is that um, the research is really good and really thorough, but the conclusion she comes to at the end, people don't necessarily agree with. But that also comes with the caveat. So, um, I've got a lot of people, <laughs> you may not be aware of how strongly people feel about Richard III. Some people feel very strongly. Um, Richard III being the uncle of these princes. So the author who wrote this loves Richard III. Um, but a lot of people, a lot of people I follow who tend to be Tudor fans don't like Richard III. Um, yeah, weirdly strong feelings for a guy who died literally 500 years ago like yeah um so i'm very intrigued i think it's going to be fascinating i think it's going to be really really interesting um and i'm really intrigued to see what conclusions she draws because she is a bit obsessed with richard the third i think this is is this the lady who found him in the car park yeah she was like really involved with finding richard the third in the car park um he, he was his grave was underneath the car park not there wasn't a car park there at the time, obviously. That's where they found him. Um, and they did like a whole funeral <laughs> many, many years later. Um, so yeah, this one I am very much looking forward to. And the drama that comes with it. So there it is. There are some of the non-fiction books that I am looking forward to getting to this year. Let me know what non-fiction books are on your TBR for 2024. Because I've got room to add some more. Um, so send me some recommendations um, give this video a like if you enjoyed it subscribe if you'd like to see more if you'd like to hear what I think about these books and if I actually read them which is another matter um, and I will see you all next time ta for now